What is up, everyone? I'm going to be hitting you with another 2021 rookie profile. Today, I'm going to be hitting on small school speedster Jalen Darden. I'm going to look at his high school background, his collegiate production, strengths, weaknesses, his NFL fit, and then rookie dynasty value. Jalen Darden really had an interesting voyage that led him to North Texas. First and foremost, he was actually a quarterback in high school. Obviously knew that if he was going to continue his football career, that he wasn't going to be able to cut it as a quarterback, you know, being 5'9 and a, you know 160 pounds at the time. So he ended up switching to wide receiver. But in order to do that, he had to switch schools. Then he had to miss some time. So there really wasn't a lot of film on him, you know, in regards to being a wide receiver. So that led to him, you know, not being very highly touted, not very highly recruited. He was a three-star recruit coming out of Texas. He did have a couple of bigger offers to schools like Virginia Tech and Memphis. And he was actually originally committed to UNLV, but something happened with that. That offer ended up falling through. A couple of weeks later, North Texas reached out. They gave him an offer after they had a spot open up at the last minute. And the next day, Darden signed his letter of intent and ended up with the North Texas Mean Green. As far as production goes with Darden, uh, he really didn't pop off until his senior year. But at the very least, he did improve upon his production, his numbers, each and every year at North Texas. As a freshman, he went 32 catches for 281 yards and three scores. Following year as a sophomore, he went 48 for 575 and four. In 2019, during his junior year, Dern almost matched what he did the first two years combined when he put up 736 yards on 76 catches and 12 touchdowns. And then obviously his senior year is what really put him on the map and when he really popped off in just nine games. Darden had 74 catches for almost 1,200 yards and 19 touchdowns. I mean, the dude just straight up dominated his competition last year. In his final season for Mean Green, uh, he led the NCAA in both missed tackles forced and yards uh, per route run among receivers. And he was third and yards after the catch behind Devonta Smith and Amari Rogers. Now, looking at the things that I like about Jalen Darden, his game, and what some of his strengths are, it really starts with his speed. Contrary to some of the other receivers that I've done these rookie profiles on, you know, Deami Brown and Monra St. Brown, Darden does have that that elite trait and that trump card, which, which is that speed. Obviously, that's something that a lot of teams are now putting a premium on, and Darden has that, so that's going to get him considered in terms of the NFL draft right off the bat. And the thing that I love with with his speed is he also has that that burst and acceleration to go along with his you know his long end top speed. Once Darden starts, his zero to sixty, his zero to one hundred is instantaneous. He doesn't take, he doesn't have that build up speed. He doesn't need the space to get going. Whenever he decides to just completely go off the line of scrimmage, he's gone. Whenever he decides to turn it on, whether it's in the middle of the route, after the catch, open field, whatever it is, he can get up to that top speed almost instantly. And sometimes we hear, you know, guys only having straight line speed, and that does not apply to Darden whatsoever. Whether you want to call it wiggle, lateral agility, shiftiness, whatever, however you want to phrase it, Darden has that as well. You especially see him with the ball in his hands in the open field, causing guys to miss left and right. Definitely has that shiftiness to his game that obviously goes along with his speed, which makes him such a weapon and such a threat whenever the ball is in his hands. And the last thing that I'll mention as far as the things I like about him, and this typically isn't something that like I really ever talk about because I think it's something that's, one, we, we don't see it, and two, it's hard to quantify, but it is his work ethic. Anytime that I read any articles leading up to this to try and get a sense of like who he was and where he came from and his backstory, several of the articles, you know, from different sites, different authors, that came up, his work ethic, talking to his teammates, coaches, staff, all that stuff, that is something that did pop up, so I kind of feel comfortable mentioning it here. And also we can see it because if you look at, you know, some of his high school numbers, he was listed as low as 150 in a couple of places. And right now for North Texas, uh, he is listed at 174. So he's at least put that work in in the weight room, you know, to add 20 pounds, 15 pounds, 
since entering North Texas. There are a few knocks I have with Darden, and the first one for me is his production profile. Obviously, he has that dominant uh, year in 2020 whenever he put up the 1,200 yards and 19 touchdowns. But outside of that, like a solid junior season, it did take him a little bit longer, especially at a program like North Texas where he's playing lower levels of competition, which is another issue in and all of its own. You typically want to see these guys from small schools dominate, you know, from, you know, from day one. Honestly, there, there shouldn't be that much competition in their way. You want to see them get on the field early and often and be able to produce early and often. And that just didn't happen until Darden was 22 years old in his final season at North Texas. Another knock I have with him uh, in regards to his route running, watch three games of his and something that like really stuck out across all three games is on the hard breaking routes. So things like curls and comebacks. It, it seemed like it took him too many steps. There was a lot of wasted movement in terms of decelerating and getting in and out of those breaks. Someone smaller like him who has the athleticism, who has the shiftiness, you want to be able to see them run more crisp routes and be able to really just snap it off at the top of, the, at the top of their stems to open it up and give them that separation. But with him, he took a, a bunch of extra steps in order to do that. And by doing so, that allows that defensive back to be able to stick with him whenever they, you know, honestly shouldn't be able to because of his athletic ability. So that was something that, you know, I, I do think he can clean up at the next level, but he's going to have to in order to get the most out of him. And being able to be more efficient with his route running would be one way to help him out in that regard. And the last thing that isn't really, a, it's not a huge knock, but it's still something I would like to see him improve and that is his uh, physicality and his toughness. You know, making that jump from North Texas to the NFL and playing in the slot in the middle of the field, he's going to have to have some of that physical play strength in order to really make an impact on an NFL team. Now, I'm not saying he has to come out and, you know, add DK Metcalf level strength, but he is going to have to do some things in order to be able to make that impact and keep himself on the team and being able to be a, a producer for your fantasy teams. Now, as far as the NFL draft goes, uh, I, I could see Darden going early day three, and there's no shortage of teams who need that speed, especially in the middle of the field with so many teams running, you know, 11 personnel and three wide receiver sets. It's kind of their base offense that, you know, they would, be, they would definitely be able to use a player like him. There's not a, really a, a landing spot that sticks out in mind so as long as he goes to an offense that's willing to, you know, scheme him and manufacture him some touches and, you know, they're, they're willing to take some of those deep shots to be able to take advantage of Darden speed, that there's really nothing that sticks out. You know, there are some, some worse landing spots, you know, places like Dallas because of the depth chart, Vegas because, you know, that, that's just not something they do. They just brought in John Brown. They already have rugs. So... They're not going to be just taking deep shot after deep shot in that offense. So there are some places that would be worse, but in terms of like a, a an optimal landing spot, I don't really have one. Like I said, as long as they're willing to use him to his strengths. And for Dynasty rookie drafts, right now, according to Dynasty League Football's March rookie ADP for one quarterback leagues, Darden's going in like the middle of the fourth. So in super flex leagues, he might not even be thought of right now if you know if you run like a standard four round rookie draft. So I do think that you know, like I said, with the draft, I think he gets that early day three capital. I think he's gone by the end of round five. So I, I do think he rises up a little bit and will become more of a of a locked in guy who's going in the majority of drafts. But I don't see him rising super far so you're still going to be able to get him in the late rounds of your drafts and he makes for that perfect dart throw and that perfect flyer all right guys that is going to wrap up my look at the Jalen darden 2021 rookie profile i appreciate you checking this out please hit that subscribe and that like button drop some comments get some conversation going and we will be back with more content for you all very soon